Hi guys, this is just a very fast few words. So originally I planned to do this one video where I will show the natural makeup look that can be transformed into more glamorous one for the different type of shoots and the tips for photographers and makeup artists how to communicate as well as uh, I would show how I take the beauty shots. Unfortunately the video turned out very long so I decided to split it into parts. So part number one, this one will be about uh, it will be a makeup tutorial for the makeup artist specific for the photo shoot as well as for photographers a lot of tips how to communicate with the makeup artists that you collaborate uh, what to pay attention to and also the uh, specific things uh, what to communicate to the client when they come with the makeup already done uh, so this will be useful both for photographers and the makeup artists and make sure to see the second part of the video where I'll actually show how I take my beauty shots. The technique, I will use uh, two different types of lighting. It will be natural light and artificial light. And I'll show the pictures as well, uh, how they turn out. So yes, without further ado, let's go to the video. <music> I have a great uh, makeup artist, Todd Terrell, and the wonderful model Casey today with us. And it's a very special uh, video. Todd will actually show us um, very natural makeup that will go with everything. So whenever you have a shoot that will require different um, look changes, or maybe it's a, a catalog shoot or something like that, this is a great look to go for. And as a bonus, he also showed how this look can be transformed into something else, more dramatic, maybe for evening wear or something like that. And I'm very, very excited for um, this video and for this collaboration. Me too, already. Uh, because I love Todd's work so much. so much. And we have a beautiful Casey that she has also a line of her own lashes that we will talk later on. And yes, let's start it. Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to see you. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So tell, uh, tell me more, please, what type of look you think of doing this first look, what you were going to do? Usually um, with the makeup, I always start super, super minimal, um, where it looks like the skin just looks like skin, doesn't look like a lot of makeup. So that way it's like a good base, so we can easily transition to something darker, deeper. Because with makeup, it's all in like saturation mm -hmm. and the color. Um, so of course, if we want it to be more dramatic, we'll just add more. Is there you do is there any difference when you do makeup for your clients and when you do makeup for the photo shoot, for example? Is there like a difference in maybe like SPF whenever you're doing it for a photo oh, shoot? Oh yeah, definitely. I don't use anything with SPF. Right. Yeah, because because the, the the main thing of SPF is to bounce back um, UVA UV, UVB rays. Mm -hmm. So when you're using that in flash photography it's basically going to do its job and it's going to bounce back that light. Got it. So then that's what will cause um, flashback. And what sense. way you like the photographer communicate with you the best? Just explain or the picture showing like a mood board? Oh, mood boards. I'm, I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. So I love when they provide images like this is the kind of look that we're going for. Yes, and that's what I want to say too for photographers out there. If you communicate with your uh, makeup artist that the best way is actually send them uh, if you have certain um, look in your mind send the pictures that are represent uh, the, the best the look that you want that's always the best rather than uh, explain it because words can mean different things for different people mm -hmm. and yes so whatever I communicate if I have something in mind I always send pictures and the more pictures the better so what exactly you want that's very important Lighting, for sure, is also key with the makeup, always. Um, so I always make sure to do um, the makeup in natural lighting. Mm -hmm. So like we have right now, we have the natural light coming through, even though it is cloudy outside and it's rainy, um, it's more cool tone. And usually cool tone lighting is the least flattering light. So, so if you look good out there. Exactly. Then it's going to look good no matter what. It just slipped my mind. <laughs> oh yes, uh, for the makeup artists there, that when you work on the shoot, the timing is definitely something to think of Always. because 
Yes, uh, it should take time and everyone has um, other things to do and especially as a studio is rented, it's all time, time, time. So yes, time yourself and make sure that you can do it in, in the more short time as possible. Um, and I want to say that good makeup artist is a great find for any photographer. Why? Because good makeup artist can save you a lot of time in editing. Because when the makeup artist does a lot of um, thorough work, on the model and they blend everything very nicely then you don't have to fix it in post-production which is really really important so Correct. find a good makeup artist and I, I want to uh, do a suggestion for every photographer if you work with human beings even if you male photographer carry a translucent powder in your bag because it can really uh, especially if you shoot with the bright light speed lights or in a natural light bright you can see that highlights and powder does do a great change. So even if you don't have makeup artist or you have a client that already come with the makeup, always have a, a powder. You can find it in any drugstore now, like translucent powder. It goes with all skin tones and just apply it. But make sure that if you have brush, it has to be clean after every single client. Or you can choose uh, maybe the sponges, like a um, like sponges? The sponge with disposable ones. Uh -huh. You can apply. It's not as good as brush, but you still will be able to apply powder with the sponges as well. So yes, powder is, is a friend of photographer, it's okay. a great friend of photographer. Especially if you just get it like in the areas that of course you already get shiny. And then from there, you can kind of build the highlights where you want them. Exactly. Because of course it's nice to look glowy and everything, but you never want to look greasy exactly. <laughs> or sweaty. Exactly. If you're a makeup artist, how can you go online um, to all the what are they the brands? Mm -hmm. They all will usually have like a pro program. Mm -hmm. So then just go and then sign up. Um, some are of course a little bit more strenuous than others. They'll mm -hmm. ask for a little bit more, mm -hmm. or some are like super easy. Um, like NYX, I think I just sent them my business card and like my ID, mm -hmm. and then that was it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good tip for makeup artists there. Oh, for example, yes. I didn't know about that. And then also photographers, they do it for them as well. Because basically anyone in the beauty industry. Is there any crazy looks that you've done? Oh yeah. And what was the craziest one? Um, the craziest one that I've done was for a client and he wanted to be, it was for Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to be kind of like an ice king. Oh, wow. So that, yeah, that was a lot of work. What do, if we're talking, for example, eyeshadows, what type of, what colors would you recommend? Always warm. Always warm? Yeah, that's what I prefer um, because they always look good no matter what. No matter what the skin type is or anything. So I kind of ran the powder that I used to contour her all around the perimeter of the face and now I'm also running it onto the eyelid as kind of like a slight contour. And I also run it underneath the eye. So as you see, it's kind of like a no makeup makeup mm -hmm. dry. It's giving a nice depth to the eye without looking like she has a whole bunch of eyeshadow on. And of course, key is blending. You never want to see harsh lines. So like this one, I have, and it has like a combination of kind of like cool tones and warm tones as well. Um, it has shimmer and it has matte. Um, so for her, I'm probably going to go in with kind of like the lighter kind of shimmery tones. So as you see, I kind of built the eye with like that more kind of satiny matte mm -hmm. shade. And now I'm going to bring a little depth and a little shine. And I'm just going to keep that like all in the center. You can see how it's just giving like a nice little That's beautiful. glow. How do you clean your brushes? I use a brush cleaner. I use the Cinema Secrets. And it is important if, if you have your makeup brushes, if you have in studios, to sanitize it uh, after every client. Exactly. It's very important. I will take a flat brush like this and I'll wet the brush. This is just like an illuminating spray. And then I'll take that darker shade. And because it's wet, it'll pick it up so it'll have a lot more saturation. And then I will use that as kind of like a liner. And if you ever feel like you did too much, because it's a powder, just kind of go back on top, blend and away. Blend it mm -hmm. So, of course, this is my favorite step, and this is adding the highlights. I'll just take a brush. And then I turn. 
I'm just going to hit these cheekbones here. So I just want to say in my studio usually I personally don't use highlighters for the reason because they look great on the young models but on the more mature older women um, it sometimes can reflect really or in accentuate the um, in imperfection in the skin so unless we have like a professional makeup artist like Todd that corrects everything and knows exactly what he's doing then I would suggest you better ask them not to put highlighter because sometimes you will end up with editing you will have to end up all the edit away all that shine so that's just a note for you I'm letting him to do whatever he's doing <laughs> but usually uh, yes here in my studio no 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 highlight or just the matte highlighters and always chew any skin that's exposed you always want to make sure that it's all nice and even with either the foundation powder or even highlights kind of like my Ooh. warmer tones like super super natural and then i have like my kind mm. of crazy colors here so of course because we want natural we're going with my little natural palette i have here just to give a nice little flush to the cheek nothing crazy with gravity everything's going to go so with makeup, everything's up, 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 up. For today, we want kind of like more natural. So I'm probably going to go in with this guy. It's like a little bit more mauve -y. This one is in, it's a matte and it's Los Angeles. I feel like this would match her lip pretty well. So then with the lip, I'm just gonna follow her natural shape. And what I'm gonna have you do is smile, but closed. I call it the fake smile, like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just slowly start to fill in the lip. So what I'll do is I'll line the lip and I'll also fill it in. So see that color, super natural. And just kind of like blot it into you. That looks like beautiful. Matches like her natural lip very, very well. I'll have you just kind of like flick down for me. And what I'll do is I just need to have it on camera, you can see it, probably this side actually. So look down, and then as she looks down, I'm going to kind of grab the lash, pull it up, and then I'm going to go from the base and wiggle out. So now when Casey does her um, curling her uh, mascara uh, and we come to the ta -da 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 lashes, <laughs> I want to talk more because Casey actually has her own line of lashes and they are beyond gorgeous. And we will go to show them uh, to you in a second, but Casey first, tell us what inspired you to create your own line of lashes. So I was also a makeup artist for a little while and when I was doing people's makeups, I was doing um, a lot of bodybuilding shows um, for, and it was a very extreme makeup, you know, and they always wanted, of course, big lashes and I was doing it for a lot of fitness photo shoots and just um, things like that. And the whole time I was doing it, I was like, man, I just wish I had my own lashes to put on people. I mean, I'm already doing people's makeup. It's the best way to market, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't do it. I, of course, had fear. Like, I feel so many people who want to be an entrepreneur do and they don't jump out and do what they really feel and I did it and just here lately I just I regained my relationship with Christ and he was like I told you to do that and you did not and it's time to do it don't fear it'll happen and I swear it's just working everything's flowing he's making he's bringing me all the resources and it's really been a blessing just like being here with y'all today you know just such a blessing that we all get to like share what we do you know I love to do that with y'all it's awesome so yeah, so I started it, and my web sh my website launches on Friday, actually. Oh yeah, yes. and we will have the sure. link to the website in the description box. Yay! So this is look one, and we will be back for look two. Yes, we will. <laughs> Okay, so we uh, finished the first part, is like a natural look that you can actually literally do with any type of clothing or styling that you're working with. And now Todd will show... And now Todd will show how uh, fast and efficiently swipe from the natural look to go with more dramatic and awesome. Todd, so what do you have in mind? So... Um, for like the more dramatic looks, all I do basically is just add more. 
So I'll just do more contour, make the eyes a little bit deeper, maybe change the lip color if needed. You can do it many different ways. It's kind of up to like what the photographer wants, or if this is the time that, he, that the photographer is like, do you, then I would just do darker on the eyes, maybe make the lip a little bit shinier, just to take it from kind of everyday wear to kind of more nighttime. And then of course, adding her amazing lashes, which of course I don't want you to be talking about. Yes. <laughs> so I will get those. And I want you, of course, to pick out the ones you feel would okay. work for. So the company is called Dual Natured because I feel like everybody has a dual nature. Everybody's got this dark side and a light side and I wanted my lashes to reflect how you can bring that out, um, especially with your makeup look, you know, going from a light look, you know, then to something more dramatic. Um, so I tried to be able to cater to people who are on the dramatic side. I have a dark side of my lashes and I do have a nice little scripture in there that says, I loved you at your darkest. And here's these, these are all um, 3D mink lashes. And you can wear these up to 25 times. And then this is soft. the light side of the um, collection. And I love the back what we put on here. She is both hellfire and holy water because that is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> drama, and drama, drama, drama. Yeah. All women are, right? Aren't we? Right. All? Everybody's got a drama side. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able to pull that out of both. You know, here's this is something you can wear more on the daily. Um, so do you have a drama side? Of course. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. yes, he does. He has drama side. <laughs> Anybody who subscribes is just going to get 20% off of their first order. So I'd love to get, you know, subscribers. I'll give you my website so you can put that in the link. Yeah, definitely. You will find the link in the description and I'll put it right now since as we're talking. So these are my favorite. These are actually, um, so all the lashes that I have for the first, kind of the first line, I have eight of them and they're all named after my sisters in Christ. They're all um, gorgeous women who totally embrace their themselves and they're so kind. And so I really wanted to kind of name them after them because that's who I really wanted the collection to be for is for all my girls who are just confident and, you know, and beautiful. That so is we so can, nice. Yes, let's do this one. Which ones are these? Ones? These are the Cassie Hay. Oh my gosh, so these Those are, are signature. Are my signature, signature lashes. Yes. Okay, perfect. But I always place them on the eye first. Oh yeah, wow, these are dramatic. dramatic. These are <laughs> really pretty though. Of course, they're not placed on her eye with the glue and everything, but I just kind of like to see how they look. So if I, of course, were to just glue them on like that, as you see, they're way long. So of course, it'll elongate the eye, but it's not fitting to her eye like we want. So I'm just gonna trim them a little bit just so they fit better. When cutting the lashes, never, of course, trim the inner part because this is usually shaped lighter, so it shapes your eye better and then it usually wings out. And the biggest trick too with lashes is having the glue kind of sit out for a moment so that way it's nice and tacky. Because if you do it directly, usually it's gonna be runny, so it's gonna be moving around all over the place. This one is a velour one. This one dries super quick already probably dry so and it comes with this nice applicator so it oh. twists for the product and then I can go directly on there and it dries super quick and I always like to place the lashes first with my hands and then if I need to I'll go on with the applicator look down for me and I always place it right in the middle See how much better it suits her eye? Because before it was kind of almost drooping down. Now this is giving that nice lift to the eye. Beautiful. And now that I have that. Oh my God, look at that. Look, it's <laughs> incredible. And now that I have that, because this band is a little bit thicker, I want to kind of match the thickness and add a little bit of a liner on top so that way it looks balanced. So you do the eyeliner after, after the lashes? Mm -hmm. You could do it beforehand if you'd like. I like to do it after the most nerve-wracking part. It what is. is <laughs> and then, now that I have that down, I want to add more intensity to the outer part of the eye, too. So I'm going to add a little bit of a deeper color on a smaller brush. This is just a darker brown. And closure, I think. 
So I'm gonna focus this kind of like where the wing part is. So it kind of diffuses it a little bit, doesn't make it too harsh. I'm gonna do it kind of like in a little C or a V motion. So a C here or a V. And it's just gonna add added depth to the eye. And see this color is making her eyes really intense too. Duh. I can see they're turning Ooh. like a little bit more green. Beautiful. doing it with the translucent. So I'm just taking that same kind of bronzer contour color and really focusing on that cheekbone. I'm using a denser brush so I can really get in there. Makeup can get rid of a double chin and mm -hmm. give you a cheek lift and give you a nose job. <laughs> Everything. Um, this one is just a gloss. This is a Juicy Tube from Lancome. So they have like a lot of shimmer and they're super glossy. And I just kind of like this lip color on that. They smell really good. Yeah, and they smell really good too. <laughs> but then of course this is gonna get that real pretty pout to the lip. Beautiful. <laughs> so we just took it from super natural to super glam. Yeah. So uh, this is a wrap. We are super f uh, happy with the result. I did my shooting of the second one of the beautiful Casey and fantastic Todd. He did a great job. Make sure to check out their Instagram and make sure to check out Casey's uh, lashes line because they are absolutely gorgeous. So pretty. See you next time. Yeah, we'll see y'all soon. Lots of love from Houston, Texas. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Cute. <laughs>